Hey, this is Matt again, and this is tutorial number uh, two of the advanced programming tutorials. During this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you, um, I, well, I was going to be showing you some of the code, how to use the code of GameMaker, but I decided that we should just keep using blocks until we actually need the code, because most of the code that you're going to be using is requires pro edition, and I don't want to quite rush you guys into buying something just yet because I want to convince you how epic Game Maker is before you have to pay I forget what it is now, like $30 for the pro edition but it is worth it if you want to do it so in this tutorial we're going to be improving our enemy AI yet again so let's go under enemy AI and then under our step we just have step towards point player dot X and player dot Y. So I'm going to drag out uh, execute code, put that in front, and it comes up with this white screen that I can type on. Now this is actual code, like you know, like when you're writing a video game, you always hear you have to write the code. Well, this is what you have to write for Game Maker. It's it's not that hard. It's not as hard as you might think. So what you need to do is for this. I want the enemy to only attack the player if they're within a certain distance of them. So for that, I'm going to say, I'm going to define a variable. I'm going to say distance equal distance equals distance under distance underscore two objects. You just need to type distance, and it will come up here. So basically, what this is doing is that we're defining this variable called distance and we're defining it as the distance to an object and you notice how like here it says distance to object and in parentheses it has object well in this case we want distance to object so parentheses and then we're going to type player and parentheses so this is going to distance is now equivalent to the distance to the object player so now before we have our step towards point, we're going to add a if, and we're going to say if variable distance is smaller than, uh, let's say 128, and it measures in pixels. So remember, your enemy, your player, your wall, those are all 32 pixels. So you can pretty much base everything off that. So I'm using 128, which is 4 times 32. And, um, that is a pretty good distance for enemies attacking depending on your game of course um, so if distance is smaller than 128 we want to step towards point player.x player.y I'm just gonna ha add the uh, starter block and the block to make it look more professional here so now let's try our game again so maybe our enemy won't rush us right away this time So we have our health bar, we have everything, but our enemy is not attacking us yet, because you'll see here, we'll get close to him, he'll follow us, he's going to chase us now. And if I'm fast enough, I can get out of his range, so I can kind of like shoot him from here. So, that is how you improve the en your enemy's AI once again. Now there was um, another user submitted question, um... That he wanted an answer. It was how do you make a wall destructible? And basically, what you need to do is you just need to have add event collision with all four of the bullets, and then under those four collisions, you'll destroy the instance. That's a pretty simple thing um, that you probably could have figured out by yourself. But um, that's how you make a destructible wall. Now. The other thing is, since this is going to be a maze game, I'm going to right click, duplicate the wall, and I'm going to say wall underscore, well, we can call this like wall underscore mist, or wall underscore, yeah, I'm going to say mist, because, or wall underscore not solid. And I'm going to uncheck solid. And then I'm going to go, and then if I go into our room, I have our wall not solid, wall not solid selected. I'm going to just put the block right there. Now you're probably thinking, why'd you trap the player in there? 
But what this actually does is it makes a version of the wall that you can pass through. You can see that it's actually a trick, so the player will be like, what, am I, what do I have to do to get out of this maze? But you can just pass through that wall really easily right there. And then you can go collect your money, take out the enemy. And I would actually increase the range on that enemy a little bit because it's too easy right now. Or add some more enemies. And you can see here that our enemy, that our, sorry, money is getting covered up by our health bar. So you just want to move the health bar over a little bit. So our exit. And so yeah, you can pretty much design a game. Now the one thing I would suggest is for the walls that you can pass through, I would have them be slightly different than the other walls. Because, um, personally, playing a game, I would want it to be fun. I wouldn't want to check every single wall for it to be um, solid or not. And there's another enemy. Blah, blah, blah. Got me a little bit, so my health went down. And that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. So now you know how to make your enemy chase you at a certain distance and mix. And I just answered a few questions that users had. So during the next tutorial, we're going to be going into some more advanced stuff to make your game better, some different types of enemies, um, some new things that you can add to your game to make it a lot better. Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial. Subscribe, uh, stay tuned for the rest of the tutorials, and have fun with GameMaker.